take five? This is take five. Oh. Take five, and we failed miserably. This is supposed to be a live 1105, but actually after three, four, five fails, four, four fails, um, we're just videoing this. And then we're gonna upload it to YouTube and we're gonna share it on Facebook. So welcome to Live 1105, but it's not even live and it's not 1105. This is Larry the Black Knight. And uh, we're working on your floor. We're detailing the floor. That's what we're doing today is yeah. making the underside ready. And we work in fiberglass. This is a fiberglass car. Give us a brief story on it. Kind of go a little bit here what we did. Tell me. Well, we had to, we, we moved the transmission tunnel, so we had to repair all that. You can kind of see it with the big glob here. The tunnel used to come back here. It was here. huge and in the way so, inside and not, not in the floor room. So we made a small one that just fits the transmission. We just got done talking about how we want to detail the inside rails here. Don't like these curved indents, this and that. We're going to go ahead and fill it. It's going to come down straight. We're just going to make it fiberglass panel in here. Fiberglass panels in there. Do that. We've already got the steering column in. There's a tube goes in there. Brake pedal comes through. We're going to clean up all this area. Of course, it'll be primer and nuts. Here's a good way we do the master cylinder. This car has been on and off the body a couple times. Yeah. Everything fitted, made sure there's room and gaps. Make sure the master cylinder is underneath this spot of the floor. Oh yeah. So we took and cut this out and we used a product called uh, Cormat. So what's it called? Plascore. Plascore. It used to be Nidacore, it's Plascore now. But you can kind of see it's a fiberglass honeycomb. And it's uh, got fiberglass on the bottom and then it's sandwiched in there. So it's very, very strong, very strong. So we cut it out where it goes for the master cylinder and then we glued a plate on top. So now, all we're going to do is from the inside, this is upside down of course, just drop that in to where the master cylinder is going to be. And if you ever have to access it, lift up the carpet, it'll be velcroed in. Just pull it out. And of course, I'm sure we're going to clean up these edges. And oh yeah. It's not just what you see that counts. Yeah. If you're building a show car, it's more important what you don't see that counts. Because uh, you know, a lot of cars, they all look the same from 10 feet. And I'm not going to say it's a 20 foot car, but we're we build at least 10 foot cars. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, you'll start looking at the details. And that's what the judges will look, like, look for. And they, they'll know where to look. And the hardest area to fix is the place they're going to look and see how you dealt with that. See what else we got. Oh, well, we got hidden, hidden, these hidden are, latches. Hidden latches. So if you need to steal Larry's car, look right under the door right, right here and they'll be hidden there. There's your latch. So, so you can, can kind of see. In. We got to notch that out of the jam. We've not I done will that. have the ignition key, so you're gonna have to hot yeah. wire it. Okay, hot wire it. Yeah. So we're back here now. We're back here. We decided that we're gonna. We got too many edges here, so we're gonna we're gonna fill this and clean this all up, and just make this roll right in there. So instead of having a lip like a steel car would, we're just gonna have a. It's gonna go straight up in there and be clean. It'll be yep. a, a real smooth look under here. Real smooth. And then now uh, we're we're gonna put this uh, hideaway license plate in here, and it'll be wired to the ignition. So that guy drops down in here, and this will just flip down, so you won't see the license plate until the key's on. So, so just park. You think you're James 007 Black Knight? Yes, I, or... I don't know. Or uh, you can try to get away with something, speeding through them stop no, signs or I stop just, lights? I just didn't, the, there's so much detail on the rear end, I just didn't want it hanging down in front of the center section because we did so much work on the on the rear end, you know, at least when it's sitting there at the car show, then you could... It doesn't you, have anything to do with the cool factor of just your lights. Well, no, that's down. part of it. There's, there's, <laughs> there's some of that. Some of that. There's some well, of that. Anyway, that'll look cool. You're making some um, panels here. Yep. Fit in. So this will go in. Yeah, this goes yeah, in like just, so. like, just like this. So we'll have two panels like that. Fiberglass them in. On each side. This I can see that pretty good down. that they can't. Here, yeah, like okay. Move this so there, there you go. You'll see that'll, that'll glass in there like that. At first, this is enough room to get the box in there, but we decided that we're going to put a plate across the top. Larry had a good idea. Let's just open it all. It'll be cleaner. So we'll cut this down to here and put a flat plate going all the way across the front. Clean it up. This will go in. We'll mount this plate into here. Weld these studs onto here. Yep. Bolt it to the top. Probably poly bonded or something onto the back. And we 
can bolt that in. So that's the project we're happening now. Yeah. Of course, it's pro streeted. It is pro streeted. So it's been pro streeted. It's a pro street car. Not radical, but pretty, pretty wide tires. Yeah. No, they're pretty. I mean, the tires are pretty wide, but the the idea was to try to keep the the um, more of the meat on the outside mm -hmm. of the car. Yeah, so it's, it, it doesn't have the traditional pro street look. It, it's still right. got some hanging out, but if you had it all hanging out, it would be taking up two lanes. Yep. Oh, yeah. So, so we're tucked under here pretty good. Yep. Yep. And we've been working on the inside of the. So we're going to spray that. We'll spray this bottom and then we're going to spray that. Yeah, that's that's coming up. We. This is going to have a unique look with. Uh, if you look up under here, the top is. It's fiberglass, and we're working fiberglass. It's a lot different than metal. You can accomplish the same things, but you do with different products and different tools. So this is all, all fiberglass, all ribbed. If you look back, we've got it paneled all the way around by the windows, got it masked off. And this shelf here will be all upholstered from here down. But the, the dash is fiberglass. Around the windows, it's all fiberglass. The jams are fiberglass. So this is going to be painted slick. It's going to be painted slick black. The whole car is going to be black. It gets an overhead console. Are we covering the console with the same as the upholstery? Yeah. So the upholstery on the console. This is the never-ending question. There is no good answer. Whenever you're painting your complete car like this, where do you paint first? Do you paint it with the doors on? Do you paint it with the parts off? Do you paint? The dash first. You paint the top first. How do, you, do we get it all at one time? And and uh, we've had that discussion going on for quite a while. Oh, absolutely. There's not one right way to do it, and there's multiple good ways to do it. Um, on a black car, you don't have the, the issues that you do with a, a high metallic car. On a high metallic car, the way that metallic stands and on the face and on the flop, you probably want to hang your doors first. That way, when you paint the whole side of the car, you're going to have the same metallic look. So you would paint your door jams first, and the, you know the jams on the car, and then put your door on, mask everything off. But we're going in small sections here. Yeah. I got to think about it yesterday. It's easier to get stay really focused on details if you're working on a small area. If if you looked at this whole car. It would be pretty overwhelming. There's been a lot of work under this car. <laughs> when you bought this car, were you overwhelmed? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I was. When I first got it, it, I was not. I wouldn't say I was just not happy with the fit and finish. I mean, there just wasn't. Just a lot of things wrong. And we've changed a lot of things. A lot of things. A lot of things. And none of it's major. If you stand back ten feet and look at it. Right, maybe around the window. There's some, some of us. Yeah. But none of it's major if you stand back from ten feet and look at it. Right. No, I mean, but as, as far as changing huge. the look of the car, we haven't really changed the look of the no. car. But it's huge in going from just a nice car, a nice driver, to a show car. Um, so about the details. If you're working in fiberglass, which we do a lot of. Um, a couple of tools. I, I've got the tools sitting here, so I left them out. This is really neat. This angle grinder get, lets you get into a lot of a lot of places that you can't otherwise. I'm a big fan of mud hog. I, got, I love my mud hog. DA blocking blocks, blocking tools. You're blocking blocking all the time. Oh yeah. But an air pile. There's places for an air pile. A saw like this is just so nice to have. You can get cheap ones at Harbor Freight. This one's gear driven. Exit. A lot more expensive. I'm hoping it's going to last more than six months. These saws around here are consumables, but a really handy saw to get in and cut, cut the parts and cut a piece like this. We cut this here. You start to cut and do cut around. We'll cut this with this nice handy tool. So if you're going to work in a lot of fiberglass, I would recommend one of these highly. Anyway, what do you got to add on, on the detailing on the bottom? I mean, just a lot of work. I mean, I don't know. I mean, that just hours and hours of blocking and blocking and blocking, you know, and just keep block. I mean, prime it, block it. You still find 
mud come through, you know, I mean, just it just takes to get it flat and straight, or I wouldn't say flat because there's a lot of radiuses on here. When, when you're looking at a, a car like you're talking about, I use the light. So if I'll, I'll look at it, even, even in the primary, you can kind of see the light reflection. And if it's not ripply wavy, I mean, it might be a hump. Right. But at least that light will take the contour of the lump and it, and it won't be jumping up and down. So you use the light as you're blocking. Uh, you use guide coat. Um, I haven't really, I didn't really use no, no guide coat this time. I kind of went, yeah, I kind of went away from it. Okay, so I, I intimidated you into No, I mean, going I, away. Just, I just read the, you know, just kept yeah. reading, the, you know, all the signs. and. Uh, so we're getting there. If you want your car to look nice, expect to spend some hours on it. And when I say nice, I'm talking show quality nice. Um, just the floor in this car has as much time in it probably as most cars have in prepping for a paint job. And that's probably not an exaggeration at all. We've got, by the time we're done here, we have a lot of time. So that's going to happen this week. Yeah. We're going to have primer on our paint on the floor, paint on the inside, it's going to turn over. I think we've been uploading this to YouTube, so it's on, uh, what do we got, Spirit Cars? What's our two accounts? t -Bucket TV and Spirit Cars. And Spirit Cars. So we'll have this uploaded on the Facebook. If you see us on Facebook and you want to go check us out on live on uh, YouTube now, we'll be a little more consistent at 11.05 if we can. I don't know if the YouTube notifies you or not, but uh, we're going to see, we're going to try those numbers. At least YouTube is very searchable. Um, so we'll try to put keywords to this. So if you're looking for an old project or if you're looking for what we're doing here, this one is titled something about detailing the other side of the hot rod, I think. So we're posting that way and we got to redo our books. We got the books somewhere? Um, we got the books. Yep, My buddy Ernie, the hot rod man, we always finish with these. You want to pick one or I'll pick one? So we got, we just grabbed one. He wrote these couple books. We have uh, Coffee Break Contemplations and Pass It On. You want to read one too? <coughs> I don't, yeah, that's fine. Okay, imagine positive and happy outcomes eliminates fear. Slicker than grease on a doorknob. Okay. If we serve others, we will be great, but if we serve the elite, we are slaves. <laughs> and they don't pay either, and they don't Dr. Pay. I. <laughs> yeah, just uh, don't do business with Dr. I. Oh, man. Okay. All right, so that's it for today. I don't know if we'll be primer tomorrow, but we'll, you, you did some good engraving on your accent. We may show that tomorrow. Yeah. I got a C-cap coming together with an interior we may show tomorrow. I got a 23 a green one coming together that's going this weekend. We may show that tomorrow. So we'll have something tomorrow. We'll see you then.